Okay, uh, welcome back, uh, first time watcher. Thank you, that's fantastic. Ugh, so lame. Okay, so what we're doing right now is uh, basically scanning an Outlook folder, looking for emails that have been responded to using an Outlook property accessor, and then moving those to a designated folder uh, in your Outlook. Uh, so first things first, um, make sure if you're using Excel to grab your, your reference from Tools, Reference, Microsoft Outlook, and whatever version of the object that you're, uh, that you're using. You can also use this code in Outlook and it automatically defaults, so it's no big deal. Um, so set up your objects. So dim OLAP as Outlook application, dim OL mail as object, and then these ones are pretty much self-explanatory. You got folder scan as an Outlook folder, uh, and a folder del, so delivery, where the emails can deliver to, is also a folder. Now, name SP is a namespace, and then final, uh, finally, <laughs> final, uh, finally, uh, property accessor is the Outlook property accessor. Now, make sure you remember this one. The property accessor is a phenomenal uh, resource. Um, go online. There's a couple blogs out there that uh, tell you how to you utilize this, uh, you know, to its fullest, and it's just it's just phenomenal. You'll, you'll blow people away at this in you know like five minutes of work. So um, we're gonna start with on error. Go to our error handler. So in case there's an issue, just it's gonna the application is gonna jump there. Um, we're gonna set our application. Okay, O L. APP is an Outlook application, namespace is olap.get namespace, and then MAPI in quotations. Now uh, we're going to use the pick folder function of the namespace. So basically it's going to show a little pop-up box that you see in Outlook to select the folder. So we're going to do this twice. Once is going to be the folder you're going to scan. and the second one is going to be the folder to which your respondent emails are going to be f sent to. <laughs> Move to, not sent. Oh my god, no, no. You're not saying anything, you're just going to be moving there. And if you do want to take this and add a button to your Outlook ribbon, uh, you can do so. And then um, rather than saving this to your settings through a user form, you can just do it, you know, at the end of the day, the end of work day. You want to move all the emails who responded to or closed out. You can you can do that too. Also, you can look at the uh, the flags. So um, I can show that to you guys later if you want. If you don't, that's fine. It doesn't matter. No big deal. Um, but there's lots of ways you can tweak this to have it work for you. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to set up the you know the uh, the limits. So folder scan items count. We're just going to let you know how many items are actually in the folder. Um, so if you've got uh, like ten thousand, it does take a little bit of time for Outlook to cycle through the object, bind to the object, and then go forward. So if you've got like a thousand emails, uh, this may be pretty tough for you because <laughs> it's going to take a really long time. So now what we're going to do is we're going to cycle through each object in the folder. So you do that for each OL mail, um, which we define as an object, um, in the folder scan items. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to define our, our message. And if it is an exact, if it is actually a mail item, so for OL mail type name is a mail item, then we know that the properties that we're going to be looking for are going to work. If it's a contact or a meeting request, well, you might get a bug in your system and it'll throw into a loop. So that's really not something you want. So once we caught up here, you're going to set your MSG, or your message, equal to your old mail because you know it's met the parameters that it is a mail item and after that this is the the most important part we're going to set our property accessor to the property accessor of that mail item sounds awesome right so msg dot property accessor now I just have a whole list of certain properties in a word document that I'll just grab and copy and paste so 
I'm going to do that right now. Um, I don't remember these things off by heart. I'm not Superman. I wish I was because that would be awesome and I wouldn't be doing this for a living. I'd be flying around the world looking for Lois Lane. So, but I'm not. <laughs> so, uh, it's going to be responded equal to the property accessor dot get property and then this link, <laughs> which I don't know off by heart, but I know what it does is it reads the... Uh, the value for that object if it's been responded. So if it's reply all, reply sender, or reply forward. Now I have those specific figures. So if responded equals 103, it's reply all. If it's responded equals 102, then it's reply sender. And 104 is reply forward. So you know those emails have been replied to. You can tweak it to those specific numbers. I just put that in there just so, so you know um, what they are, so you don't have to go guessing. So if you just want to move all emails have been replied all, you can do so, or reply forward, etc. It's up to you. So in this case, um, if either of my conditions are met, so if it's either reply all, reply sender, reply forward, I'm going to move it to my new folder. So I could, you know, call the folder complete emails, uh, and then that's it. <laughs> um, so yeah, so once we kind of finish this up, we can grab a whiskey, you know, preferably a 16-year-old old man, you know, sitting outside on a Muskoka chair, um, but it's getting pretty cold, so I don't know if we're going to be able to do that. So, yeah, we're just going to just finish up this code and then call it a day. Mm -hmm. This is the lull. This is where I went a little too quickly. And now we're waiting. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> so the move function is very simple. So we're telling our object. Uh, so our object is a mail item. So mail item move to the destination folder. This is a syntax for it. It's very simple. Um, it's great. You may have an issue though if you're using an item from a shared folder that has a server somewhere else. <laughs> so we, we had an issue at work where our server is located, you know, somewhere in the United States, and we, to communicate to it, we got to, you know, communicate to the server over there, and then in its loop to, to I guess, maintain the object, it gets dropped sometimes, not all the time, it was just kind of haphazardly doing it just to piss you off, so, super, love it. It was just the best, just the best. So, we're going to finish off our error handling. This is really basic, really simple. It's not going to trap any of the errors that you really need. Um, it's just basically going to let you know that there was an issue with the program. So program exit uh, is basically going to be called upon when we want to exit the program. And error handler is just going to let you know what the error number is and error description. So step through the, step through the application, bind to Outlook, we're going to bind to our namespace, we're going to pick our folder, and then we're going to run through it. Now this is my Hotmail account, so I don't really respond to those emails ever. But if I were to respond to it, you would see the responded value would be bigger than zero. <laughs> it would either be 103, 102, 104. And then once it meets those conditions, it would take that mail item and it would move it. And that's it. So hopefully you liked it. Hopefully it helps. Um, you can also use this technique um, if you want. You can export the data to... Excel and create a report, especially if you want to do a recon of you know emails you need to respond to. So that's it. Uh, any questions, just let me know. Answer them in the comments. And thanks for listening. Ciao.